In this edition of Back in History, we discuss the history of the American White House. The White House is the official residence and workplace of the President of the United States of America. At the time of the making of this video in 2022, the White House is 230 years old, its foundation stone having been laid on October 13, 1792. The White House is indeed an institution deeply rooted in history. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. George Washington was the first president of the United States of America. He was inaugurated in April 1789. Throughout his tenure, he lived in rented buildings. John Adams was the second president of America. He started his tenure in a rented building. There was thus the urgent need to build a befitting permanent residence an official workplace for the president and members of his family. While he lived in the rented buildings, President George Washington conceived the idea of having a permanent state owned by fitting residence, an official workplace for the president. He chose the location where the White House is seated today and also chose the architectural design for the White House. The chosen architectural design was the one submitted by James Hoban, an Irish-born architect of repute. In 1792, President George Washington laid the cornerstone for the building of the White House. Construction work started in earnest from October 13, 1792 till November 1, 1800. In essence, it took a total of eight years to start and complete the construction of the White House. At the time of the completion of the building, the tenure of President George Washington had lapsed and the President did not leave for one day in the White House. Another President was elected, John Adams, and at the time of John Adams' inauguration, the White House was still yet to be completed. John thus began his tenure still in a rented building. John would however become the first president to occupy the White House when he moved in on Saturday, November 1, 1800. Since John's time till date, every president of America lives and works in the White House. The White House is made up of a total of 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, and 6 levels of residence. There are also 412 doors, 147 windows, 28 fireplaces, 8 staircases, and 3 elevators in the White House. It has a kitchen which is capable of serving dinner to as many as 140 guests. Over the years, various improvements have been made to the White House by successive administrations in response to the demands of the various moments. The White House complex, as at today, includes the executive residence, the West Wing, the East Wing, the Senova Executive Office Building, and the Blair House, which serves as guest residence. The executive residence is made up of six stories, the ground floor, the state floor, the second floor, the third floor, as well as a two-story basement. The White House also has a tennis court, a bowling alley, a movie theater officially called the White House Family Theater, a jogging track, and a swimming pool. The White House receives an average of 30,000 visitors every week from all walks of life and from all countries of the world. The White House also has a bunker, which was built during the Second World War to be used by the President and members of his family in moments of emergency or attack. The bunker is officially known as the Presidential Emergency Operations Center. 
It is also on record that the White House sit on a large expanse of land measuring a total of 18 acres. The White House is an edifice rooted in history running into hundreds of years. As Elia noted, the White House was first occupied by President John Adams, the second president of America, who moved into the mansion on Saturday, November 1st, 1800. It is recorded that on moving into the White House, President John Adams wrote his wife Abigail in the following words, I pray heaven to bestow the best of blessings on this house and all that shall hereafter inhabit it. May none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. John had arrived at the mansion before his wife and thus chose to inform her of his arrival via a handwritten letter and the quotation just made was made in the last paragraph of that letter. John Adams only served for four years and could not secure a second term having lost his second term bid to his vice president Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson then became the second president to live and work in the White House. He described the White House as, quote, the pleasant country residence. Thomas Jefferson left, later complained that the White House was too big and added that it was big enough to accommodate two emperors, one pope and the Grand Lama in the bargain. Ironically, it was the same Jefferson who later saw the need to expand the White House. In 1814, in the course of the War of 1812, the White House was set ablaze by British forces during the notorious burning of Washington. The building was badly affected by the fire, remaining only the exterior walls. James Hoban, the man who drew the architectural design of the White House, was contracted to oversee the reconstruction of the building. Several improvements and modifications have over the years been added to the White House premises, including the building of the Oval Office, which serves as the former working space of the President. President Harry Truman is one other president who carried out extensive renovation of the White House. However, following the completion of work done by President Truman, no substantial architectural changes have been made to the White House. This is as a result of the need to respect and preserve the historic character of the White House. There is in place a committee known as the Committee for the Preservation of the White House. And before any modification to any of the rooms or section of the White House is carried out, this committee must first approve of it. It is reported that the modern press briefing room of the White House was created by President Richard Nixon. It is also on record that computers and printers were added to the White House in large numbers during the administration of President Jimmy Carter. The use of computer technology was expanded during the administration of President Ronald Reagan. Bill and Hillary Clinton also added to the building by refurbishing some of the rooms. First Lady Laura Bush also did some refurbishing of the Lincoln bedroom. Michelle Obama planted the White House's first organic garden. In 2020, First Lady Melinda Trump redesigned the Rose Garden. During the era of Franklin Roosevelt, the White House became one of the first wheelchair accessible government buildings in Washington when modifications were made to that effect. A couple of questions naturally come to mind about the White House. One, are visitors allowed into the White House? The answer to this 
is that the White House was from inception open to members of the public. This practice is applicable to date, except that there are some conditions in place before visitors are allowed to go into the White House. This is as a result of recent security concerns and the need to preserve the house and its occupants from attacks. Following September 11, the E Street between the south portico of the White House was permanently closed to members of the public. Pennsylvania Avenue had earlier been closed to vehicular traffic as a result of security measure. Before September 11, visitors were usually taken on a daily public tour of the White House. These tours were however suspended in the wake of the September 11 attack of the Twin Tower. Today, the White House is open to members of the public but under very strict security conditions. The other question is, who protects the White House? The answer to these is that the White House is protected round the clock by an elite team of the United States Secret Service and the United States Park Police. The same units also provide security to the President of the United States of America. The White House Military Office also provides military support for the White House. The other question is, who takes charge of the day-to-day -day functioning of the White House? The answer is that the White House Chief Usher is the person in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the White House. He is the head of the household staff and operations at the White House. It is the Chief Usher who develops and administers the budget for the operations and maintenance of facilities of the White House. He oversees disbursements from budgets, purchase of supplies, and so on. He also oversees the first family's private as well as public life. The Chief Usher works closely with the Office of the President, the Secret Service, the White House Military Office, and all other government agencies as would be required of him from time to time. The Chief Usher, however, holds office at the pleasure of the serving president and can be relieved from office by the next president or even by the president that he is serving. The other question is, does the Queen have a room in the White House? The answer to this is that there is a bedroom named after the Queen in the White House. The bedroom is on the second floor of the White House. Do guests stay at the White House? The answer to this is yes. There is a President's guest house in the White House. It is used as a state guest house to host visiting dignitaries and other guests of the President. The other question is, what is beneath the White House? Here is the answer. It is the Presidential Emergency Operations Center, which is a bunker-like structure that is underneath the White House. It is at the east wing of the White House. It serves as a secure shelter and communication center for the President of the United States of America, members of his family, and others in the event of an attack or emergency in the White House. The other question is, was there any president of the United States of America who did not live in the White House? The answer to this is that there was only one president who did not live in the White House. That was President George Washington, the first president of America. Interestingly, he was the one who chose the site of the White House and also chose the architectural design. He served for two years or four terms each, but the building was not completed at the time of the completion of his tenure. And thus, George Washington did not live in the White House as President of the United States of America. The other question is, how much did it cost to build the White House? Here is the answer. It is recorded that the total cost for building the White House at the time of its completion in November 1800 was 
$232,372. The other question is, does the vice president live in the White House with the president? The answer is no. The vice president's official residence is located at the grounds of the United States Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. The other question is, can one just walk into the White House on a visit? The answer is no. Tours around the White House are scheduled on a first-come, first-served basis. Requests can be submitted up to three months in advance, but not less than 21 days in advance. Note also that White House tours can be cancelled at any time, even at the shortest possible notice. The other question is, where does the president sleep in the White House? The answer is that the president's bedroom is on the second floor of the main building. The other question is, is it true that the White House was built by slaves? The answer to this is that slaves were indeed employed at every stage of the building of the White House. They were involved in the quarrying of stones and transportation of stones to the building site up to the construction of the executive mansion of the president. It is thus true that slaves participated actively in the building of what is today standing as the White House. It should however be noted that the White House was not only built by slaves. Skilled migrants, European craftsmen, white wage laborers, and other free African-American wage laborers also participated in the building of the White House. The other question is, what is the name of the official office of the president? The answer is Oval Office. The other question is, who was the youngest president to live in the White House? The answer is that the youngest president ever to occupy the White House was John F. Kennedy, who was 43 years old on his inauguration. The other question is, who is the oldest president to live in the White House? At the time of his inauguration, President Joe Biden is the oldest president in history to occupy the White House. The White House is perhaps the most famous building in the world today. It remains a national asset and a historic treasure to the people of the United States of America. It is more than an architectural masterpiece. It is a symbol of America's democracy. The White House belongs to the people of America and each president is only but a temporary occupant who is expected to leave the building at the end of his tenure. Thank you for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.